Welcome in, welcome one, welcome all to this week's Let's Talk. If you're not familiar with Let's Talk and the Young Dad podcast, they are one. They are one and the same. They go hand in hand with each other. A mini, just basically a mini podcast version of the big show, the Young Dad Pod, in the streets and on the podcast platforms. We use the name Let's Talk times Young Dad Pod. If you haven't heard of it yet, let me tell you about how we are currently live on AMP. AMP is recreating radio. They are great. We are super excited to be on there. It's just basically like a, it's only like platforms. It's only like chat room and stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, definitely check it out if there's something that you're interested in and you want to start doing more of. I think it's pretty cool. And you can find us there at Young Dad Pod. So pretty easy to find us. Pretty easy to find us on all social medias. And yeah, uh, today on the show we have Would You Rather from a five year old. And then a bunch of holiday advice for kids, for the for the parents with kids, for your families, for seeing your families, and for your relationship as well. So it's going to be a wild and crazy ride, so grab your juice box, grab a snack, and let's talk. Do you guys want to know something I love more than almost anything? is water. I love cold water from a reusable water bottle. I love water bottles that have a, an amazing wood finish. I love water bottles that keep your water cold for more than 24 hours at a time, even in the most extreme heat. I love shaker bottles. I love gallon water bottles. I love can koozies. I love custom dog bowls, shaker bottles, bedding, sheets, pillows, comforters pillow cases, extra accessories, ice packs, tons of different gifts for him, for her, gift cards. You can get all these and save money at coldest.com. Coldest water brand, the coldest water bottle, the coldest dog bowl, the coldest can coolie, the coldest sheets, the coldest pillow, the coldest everything. They're all amazing and they're all on a site-wide Black Friday sale right now. Save some money. Save some extra money when you use code BALLBOY10 at checkout. You can get the new sports finish. You can get the one-gallon jug. You can get tumblers, mugs, plastic bottles, and can coolers, and so much more at thecoldest.com. Check it out. Use code BALLBOY. Use the link in our link tree. However you want to get there, thank us later by getting someone an amazing gift this holiday season, or treat yourself. You deserve it. You earn it. You deserve to have cold water. Treat yourself. Think us later. Thankful for you guys showing up, even when it's just me here. And we get to just talk you and you and me, audience. So it's super fun. So I have some... I have five would you rather questions from my five year old where we're going to answer them and I'm going to give you guys what I would answer for these. First one, would you rather eat a lot of junk food or eat a lot of healthy foods? Now, I wanted to break this down because in her head, it's probably obvious, eat a lot of junk food. But for the adult, you're probably thinking, well, if I eat too much healthy foods, it's going to be bad for me because it's going to hurt my gut and I'm going to feel weird, and it's not going to taste very good. But if I eat all that junk food, I'm going to get fat. I'm going to not feel great. I'm going to get diabetes and all these other things wrong. And so the answer for a kid is obviously junk food because, duh. I mean, I would eat junk food if I could too all the freaking time because it's delicious. It's junk food. But I would... If I really had to, and I'm thinking about long-term health, and that's the only thing I can eat for the rest of my life in this scenario, then I'm going to say healthy foods, and I'm going to learn to eat my vegetables. I'm not a big vegetable eater. I have never have been. I don't think I ever will be, and that's okay. Vegetables aren't for everyone. So you kind of got to learn that for yourself. The next one, would you rather have a lot of baseball cards or a lot of Pokemon cards? Now, this one, this one's interesting. Because I do love baseball cards, and I do love Pokemon. I love both the sport of baseball. 
love Pokemon. They're like two of my biggest passions. Yes, I they're passions. I love Pokemon. I love baseball. Hence the Ball Boy Media, Ball Boy Blog. Do a lot of baseball stuff as well as this podcast. You know, C Pod, all that fun stuff. So baseball, Pokemon cards. Man, that's a really hard one. I would have to say. Give me baseball cards. Give me baseball. Well, no. Pokemon cards. Man, this one's tough. Um, We'll come back to that one. Would you rather sleep on the ground or on the bed? Obviously, the bed. Because I don't want to sleep on the ground. That that one was, it was a gimme. So, I just went with it. You know, that was an easy one. I didn't have to think too much about. This next one, would you rather only drink energy drinks or water? My daughter knows me. She knows that I really do like me some caffeine. So, if I really have to pick one or the other, I'm probably going to go water. Because water can hydrate you, which will then give you energy and all that fun stuff. And Yeah, um, they do make caffeinated water, so I don't think she thought of that. So, loophole. Here, so I'm gonna go with just water and water like things. Anything that says water at the in the title of it is I believe is on the table here. And then would you rather live in an apartment or a house? Now the context behind this one is because we currently live in an apartment. Um my kids mom, they they rent a house. You know, I'm hoping to do the same thing, so we've had that conversation. And whatnot, so man, our our apartment is cozy, but I would much rather live in a house. I haven't lived in a house in like almost ten years. Like that's a long time to not live in a house. So yeah, I'm gonna go house there. And then if we go back to the Pokemon baseball cards, I I still don't have an answer because both can have like crazy value. But I would say the Pokemon cards are probably more valuable. So my luck of having, a, if I had a lot of Pokemon cards, I would probably have a lot more value than having a lot of baseball cards. Because it's, it's a bigger niche, I guess. I'm going to go Pokemon cards. I'm going to go Pokemon cards. That was it for my Would You Rather. Uh, those are from my five-year-old. Shout out to her. If you want to run through those one more time with your significant other or your kids, would you rather eat a lot of junk food or eat a lot of healthy foods? Would you rather have a lot of baseball cards or a lot of Pokemon cards? Would you rather sleep on the ground or on the bed? Would you rather drink only uh, caffeinated drinks or just water? Because everyone likes their diff- caffeine a little bit differently. And would you rather live in an apartment or a house? So definitely drop that in the comments on whatever platform you're listening to. Uh, for which, what your would you rather answers would be. And I look forward to seeing them. I'm going to take a quick break, and I will be right back with you. Do you want to give someone just an amazing gift this holiday season? Well, let me help you out. You know someone that loves to cook, loves flavor, but doesn't love all the extra things that come in your normal store-bought seasoning? That's why Danos is amazing. Low sodium, zero calories, all natural ingredients, four amazing flavors. Original. Everything bagel, spicy, and chipotle. It's all natural. It's low sodium. It's Dano seasoning. Yum, yum. Get you some. Use our link in our link tree. Use our code BALLBOY at checkout to save some money, support your favorite podcast, and to give someone some amazing flavor this holiday season. Wonderful round of applause. Thank you to the live studio audience. You guys are, you guys are it. We, I love you guys. You guys are great. You guys make the show. You guys make the show better. Really appreciative of you. And uh, don't forget the band. A shout out to the band. Mostly just the drummer since we only have a drummer. And uh, yeah, they, they, he's great. He does all the drum stuff. He's fantastic. Shout out. And anyways, let's jump into it. It's the holiday season. Everyone's dealing with kids and family and, you know, the the challenges that come with that for the holidays. 
and it can be tough. It can be really difficult trying to manage all those different aspects. So I'm going to give you guys a few pieces of advice for your kids, for your family, and for your relationship as well, if you would. So we're going to start with kids and family. One of the biggest things I can think of, the first thing that came to mind when thinking of this topic was with your kids, do not force them to hug, interact with a family member that they don't want to. This is just something that can create, you know, something toxic, incredibly harmful. And it's really telling them at a young age that they don't get to have their boundaries respected. So definitely something to, to keep an eye on, to just remember as you go about this holiday season. Don't force your kids into an uncomfortable situation. You know, let them be comfortable. Let them make their own choices. Let them be comfortable with who they're comfortable with. Uh, those people, those family members, they're adults. They can suck it up, buttercup, as far as I'm concerned, if they don't get a hug or something from a kid. So, boo-hoo, so sad. Move on. Next, and this is one that I didn't think of until I thought of it, so I guess I thought of it. It's keep an eye on your kids and make sure that they're safe. We go to a lot of public events during this, Santa pictures. You go out a lot, Christmas tree farms, just all these holiday things that are going on around your community, around the, you know, around the cities that you live in. There's a lot of public events. Keep them close to you as... Because sex trafficking related crimes do go up during the holidays. Yeah, it's because it's a more susceptible time. People are in the holly jolly spirit. But you also do need to keep your kids close to make sure that they don't run off and then disappear. And then something happens later on. I pray that it doesn't happen to you. I pray that it doesn't happen to anyone. It doesn't happen to me. It doesn't happen to anyone. But it does happen, sadly, in our world that we live in. So please be extra cautious with your kids. Keep them close. And just keep eyes on them and uh, make sure you always know where they are. Last piece of advice for your kids, for the parents with kids, is to make it fun for them. Do the extra things. Of course, if you have the budget and resources to do so, go to that local, you know, Santa event or um the light shows or just any of those different things that are going on around your community because i guarantee there are or take you know a night and go look at all the christmas lights around your neighborhood do the free things that don't cost anything as well if you can't afford more do more but even just take those walks you know around the neighborhood to look at all the christmas lights or anything even remotely close to that to make those holiday memories play in the snow do the things that, you know, you maybe did or didn't do as a kid that you're like, man, I never got to do this, but I'm, I'm going to do this now with my kid because, because I can. And so do those things. Make the holiday special for your kids. It's just at the end of the day, it was just some money that you're going to earn back. It was just some time that was well spent and it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Take the extra time. If you have the resources, do it. Or find the things that you don't need that money to do and do it. Or go to the library and get some Christmas books. Rent uh, or check out Christmas books. And read Christmas books. Put on a Christmas movie. Do something. Make hot chocolate. Just make the holiday special for your kids. Whatever it is. Make it more than just about presents and Santa. And, you know, the the superficial things out there that definitely are out there, make it more than that because it is so much more than that. Go and give time. Go and give service. Go and do something with your kids. You know, do the more you do, the more memories you create, the better it'll be long term for your relationship with your kids. I promise you that. And this is especially important if you're a single parent, single mom, single dad, or just, you know, an aunt or an uncle with a kid um that you maybe didn't plan for it's your first holiday together make that extra time that you do have them during the holiday special and really extra fun especially that time that it's just you and them do those extra things make those memories together because you only get so much limited time so make the most of it make the absolute most of it i promise it won't hurt at all 
All right, we're going to jump over to the family side of things. So deck the hall is not your family. I'm just kidding. You can deck your family if you want. That's that's on you. That's between you and your family. But when it comes to your family, check in on them. Make a call. Call your grandma. Call your uncle. Call whoever. Calls don't cost nothing. They're included in your phone bill that you're paying for anyway. Send a text. Check up on people. Say, hey, no, I haven't talked to you in a while, but want to talk. You know, let's catch up. I know it's the holidays. How have you been? What are your plans? What are you doing? All those fun things. Make sure that you reach out, you interact, and you talk to people because it's so important to make sure that everyone feels, you know, seen, heard, acknowledged, and not alone during the holidays because it's an awful time. I mean, the sun sets at four o'clock. It's dark all the time. Seasonal depression creeps in. All those things. Make sure you check in on your family and friends and talk to them and make those calls and, you know, invite them out for hot chocolate or make the time or do those extra things that will really make a big difference or can make that big difference. And I know it'll make a big difference, whether no matter what time of year it is, but especially during the holidays. And while it is a myth, according to the American Psychology Association, that suicides increase during the holidays, there is at least one male suicide every minute of every hour of every day. The annual adjusted suicide rate, and that's, that's a worldwide stat, one male to suicide every minute of every hour of the day. That's a worldwide stat. If we isolate that just to the United States, however, the annual adjusted age, the annual, blah, 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 say that 10 times fast, I dare you, the annual age adjusted suicide rate is 13.42 per 100,000 individuals. Males die by suicide 3. Point times faster, 3 times, not faster, 3.5 times more often than females. On average, there are 130 side, 132 suicides per day. That's a lot. A lot of people, you never want that to come close to home. So reach out, check on people, talk to people. You know, if you haven't talked to them now, it's a perfect time of year. Say, hey, man, how you doing? How's your holidays? Start small. You don't have to go full-blown reconnection, but check in on them. Let them know, hey, you know, I was thinking about you. Care about you. Just want to make sure you're doing all right. You know, it's the simple little things can mean the world to people and really change someone's mind that maybe having these intrusive dark thoughts. Keep that in mind. I posted a tweet last week on our Instagram page from a post that I saw on Facebook. You know how you save the picture and then you can go to Instagram, you post it. So it was one of those tweets that was in the picture. And so I posted on the Instagram at Young Dad Pod and it got some really, it got a really weird comment saying that like we're trying to limit people and take away their voice, and it was a really weird response. And it's like that's the opposite of what this means. So be the judge for yourself. We are a big advocate for mental health and for not, you know, for those who do have those intrusive thoughts to get help big advocate for it but the post i tweeted or the, the tweet that was posted says shout out to the suicidal people who stay alive strictly for the sake of others i see you you are important you are loved thank you for being here despite your own feelings i hope one day you want to be here just as much as everyone else wants you and man that was like that cut deep because i mean there's so many people who are just you know not taking that step because they don't want to hurt other people by doing it. You'd be surprised how many probably your coworkers, friends, family members may be in this place. And that's why it is so important to just remind those you care about, interact with on a daily basis. Just remind them that you care, that they're wanted, that they're loved. Because that can go such a long way. Those simple words can go such a long way. Especially for children, teenagers, and those in your life. Because I'll tell you, even third graders are very aware of their feelings and depression and know 
kind of what those feelings feel like. And so definitely keep keep that in mind. Even your young kids know that they're aware of these things in their heads and that those feelings are real, that they're valid. So please make sure you listen and validate them. And again, check in on your friends. Do you have those thoughts and you're hearing this? Reach out. It's not easy, but there are so many people who care about you that want you to stay here. And they want you to want that just as much as they want it. They truly do hope that one day you want to be here just as much as everyone else wants you to because you are wanted. You're not a burden to the world. People do want you here. Promise. And, you know, this was really in relation to our Movember journey that we partnered with Movember uh, through the month of November to raise uh, money for different projects to, you know, men mental health, prostate cancer awareness, testicular cancer awareness, those different things with Movember that recently ended, hence today being December 1st. And my cause or my reason for my cause was, you know, for those we lost to suicide and me personally being in that dark place in the past, you know, 10, 11 years ago, I'm very grateful that I'm not in that place, but not everyone can say that same thing. So, you know, I see you guys who are struggling. Your your feelings are completely valid. You're loved, you're worthy of love, and you're special, and people do care about you. So please, please, please remember that as we go through this holiday season. Just remember you're not alone. There's people out there who want to check in on you and be a part of what you got going on and they, they want to care for you. So let them be there for you. Let them be that support. Super important. Lastly, this is the very last point I'll make about family and then I'll jump into relationships. Lastly, when it comes to your family, be present with them. Holidays are not easy for everyone. So many people you know, you interact with on a daily basis. Holidays probably aren't easy for them. They're probably thinking of someone they lost, someone that's not here anymore. And they're, going back through different parts of the grieving process but you can always listen to our different podcast um let's talk about the seven stages of grief that i talked about I promise you that'll really help or you can go over to the, the website ballboymedia.com and check out the tnt uh, piece i wrote that i wrote for the third to sixth graders about the seven stages of grief so hopefully you find one of those helpful for you but lastly when it comes to your family be present with them because there's so many people, myself included, that wish that certain people were still here so that they could see them, they could hug them, they could talk to them, they could spend another Christmas with them, they could laugh with them, have dinner with them, all those different things. There's so many different people who lost a loved one this time of year that are struggling, that lost a parent close to this time of year or after this time of year, or it was the last time I saw them was Christmas and you know, this time of year does weigh heavy on a lot of people's hearts, a lot of people's hearts. Or, you know, you may work with someone that's in the armed services or they have a spouse in armed services and they're not home for the holidays. And, you know, so many different things. You never know what people are going through. So be kind, but also be present. Be present with your family that is there in front of you. Don't take this time of year for granted because it could be the last time you get to the last time you get to spend one of these holidays with some of these people. I know that's a scary thought and uncomfortable and you're probably just brushing it off and you're like, nah, 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 nah. Grandpa, he good, he good. Or, you know, Uncle Uncle Bob, he cool, he cool, he good. Or Aunt, Aunt Jane, you know, she's fine. Nothing's going to happen to her. This guy's nuts. But you and I don't know that. Neither of us know that. That's the scary part, because we're taking it for granted. Put the phone down, put the video games down, be present, have a conversation, play that board game that you hate, play that game that everyone else is playing, jump in, play, be a part of it, enjoy that time, because I'm saying for myself, I wish I had that time with so many people that aren't here anymore. So take that time. You know, talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents, your aunts, uncles, whoever. Ask them to tell you about their lives, their memories, their stories. You know, if grandpa's around, but grandma's not. Say, hey, grandpa, tell me about, tell me about, you know, when you met grandma. You guys fell in love. Tell me your guys' story. 
just tell me a story. I promise you, these people, they want to tell you their stories. They want to tell you about their lives. They want you to remember them. They want you to know. And they want to talk about it. So don't be afraid to ask. Say, hey, Grandpa, tell me about Grandma. Tell me about you guys at Grandma. Tell me about Grandpa. What was he like, you know, back when he was younger, when you guys first met? Was he crazy? Was he this? You know, tell me those tell me those stories about him. And listen, listen to those stories. Commit them to memory. Because those are the stories that you're going to tell your kids one day when they're going through the pictures on your phone or on the laptop or pictures you have printed out, hanging up in those old picture frames from grandma's house that you got because your mom didn't want them or something. And those are the moments that you're going to have. Like, oh, yeah. See, look, this is your Grandpa Jim right here. Man, he loved Eagles. And he loved watching these shows. We'd watch them together. I remember he would pick me up from school. We'd crack open an orange soda. We would watch TV, and it was so much fun. And we would spend that quality time together, and it was amazing. Cherish those moments. Cherish this time. Make those memories that you're going to tell someone else later about that person, that you're going to hold dear for yourself. Don't. Don't lose that time this year. Cherish it. Put the distractions down. Be fully present with your family. And I promise it's going to be so awesome for you long term. We're going to take one last quick break. We're going to come back. I'm going to give you some holiday relationship advice. And then we're going to wrap it up. I was trying to get the audience back involved, but I guess they don't want to participate right now, but that's okay. So the last part we're going to get into is some holiday relationship advice. And, you know, I'm probably way underqualified to give you guys relationship advice. Maybe I'm overqualified. You know, I was married for five years, divorced, single for a year and a half. Now I'm starting over again. And it's been a crazy wild right out there but maybe i'm under or qualified not qualified at all somewhat qualified who knows you be the judge it's up to you it's up to your interpretation but this is my advice for you guys in relationships during the holidays so this is to go with your partner significant other husband wife whatever you call them domestic partner whatever you call them boyfriend girlfriend whatever you call them my first piece of advice and i only have two i have three i have three i'm going to start backwards here because i wish i would have put these in different order First one, make the gifts as equal as possible so one person doesn't feel like there was any less effort put into the gifts that they got. Like, let's say I got my girlfriend like $500 worth of gifts. She got $100 worth of gifts. The perception isn't the dollar value, but it's like, man, I put a lot of effort in and she didn't put any effort in. No, that's, that's not it at all. Set, set a boundary, set an equal saying, okay, we're going to give each other three gifts. This is our budget. Don't spend over this budget because I don't want you to feel bad. You're not getting me something, and I don't want to feel the same way. Just make it equal. This is our budget. We're going to stick to it. Have that conversation. It's an easy conversation to have. Thank me later. Next one. Uh, let's go back to the top. Set aside extra time for your partner and you during the season. This time of year is so busy. You're taking pictures, wrapping presents, you're running around, you're going to Santa event, one, two, three, four, holiday party, six, seven, eight. You're running around. It's crazy. You're all over the place. It's snowing. It's cold. Everyone's grumpy. It's dark all the time. It sucks. It's so busy. And it's so easy to forget your partner because they are almost part of your routine at that point. Wake up. Hey, kiss, breakfast, all that fun stuff. It's so easy to like forget your partner's like important because you're doing all these other things. But remember that they are super important this time of year. They're, I mean, they're always your partner. They're just as important this time of year as they are any other time of year. So make sure you make that time for them during that season, you know, even if it's, you know, putting everything down, make some hot chocolate, watching a Christmas movie. Simple things, you know, speak your partner's love language. You can go back to the five love languages, let's talk. Lots of amazing tips and tricks to talk, to use for different love languages to help you speak them better or to understand them better. You can use those. Use that as a resource, you know, whatever you need to do. Find ways to still make your partner feel special and take your relationship, you know, special during this time of year. Because it's a special time. You know, we're, we're grateful for our partners. We're grateful for the things they do for us. Unless you're not, then 
you know, that's not my place to judge, but, you know, definitely work on that. But, you know, make, make the season more than just about the business and the running around and the family gatherings, you know. You're going to be with your partner every day. Make sure that they're, they're still feeling important and, you know, just as they would any other time of year. Don't lose sight of them. And lastly, and this is the one I'm speaking from personal experience. So when I go out, I only am usually running on about like half a social battery because I work around people all day. And so like I want like very little social interaction outside of that. So my social battery is normally running about eh, half to two thirds full. So it gets empty pretty fast, but especially going to like an event, family event, work, holiday, whatever, it drains fast. And I'll be like, great, talking, upbeat, cheerful, having so much fun. And then the next moment, I just dead battery. And like, it's noticeable. Like, I feel it for myself. And that's something that I have to communicate saying, hey, I'm, I think I'm ready to go. Like, you cool if we, you know, start saying bye to people and wrap up? And if your partner has that, then you know that about your partner, which you should. You're like, oh, yeah, definitely. Let's, let's go. You know, I'll see these people or you'll see these people again. You know, not a big deal. And, you know, make your rounds, say bye, shake hands, give hugs, whatever. And leave. Leave. If people are hurt and upset about you leaving after the main events of the event are over, excuse me, after the main events of the events are over, then, okay, I stayed for the main part. I was already there. I promise you, no one feeling you're going to be hurt. You know, take that time. Take care of your partner's mental health. If they get upset then that's on them and they got bigger problems so let that be on them but that that's all i have for the relationship advice for your partner during the holiday season you know listen to them try to make equal gifts and then set aside that time for your partner to make them feel special but outside of that that's that's our episode today guys thank you so much for for tuning in thank you for joining us live on amp appreciate you guys who popped in and out throughout the podcast and again, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all the places at Young Dad Pod. You can find us on the website at Ball Boy Media. And yeah, until next time, we will catch you next week.